All right, good morning, everyone. I thought we would go ahead and just uh, continue on with um, wisdom from the Bible, daily thoughts from the Proverbs. So we are on October 29th. As he taketh away a garment in cold weather, and as vinegar upon nit a nitre, so is he that singeth songs to a heavy heart. Chapter 25, verse 20. A woman lay in her hospital bed crying. The diagnosis had been cancer, and it was inoperable. While she was sobbing, a friend came in to see her. She asked the woman what was wrong, and the woman told her. Her friend patted her hand and said, Where is your faith? Everything will work out just fine as long as you have faith. God must have some reason for letting this happen, so just sit back and watch him work. The woman felt a strange anger in her heart. She knew her friend was trying to be helpful, but her words stung and were terribly unfair. She had plenty of faith. That had nothing to do with it. She had cancer, and that was something she wasn't prepared to deal with. Her friend acted like she hadn't even heard. God never causes bad things to happen. He does indeed take bad things and turn them into good but we have no way of knowing what he has in mind. When we try to comfort others, we need to connect with their pain and suffering. Offering them easy answers and platitudes does not help at all. We merely add to the person's suffering. We end up giving nothing of value, and in fact, it is as if we pour vinegar into their wounds or take from them a cloak in the cold of winter. We do more harm than good. Lord, let me listen to the cries of others and respond from my heart where you are, Lord and Master. Make me a compassionate, loving friend when others suffer. October 30th. If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. Chapter 25, verses 21 and 22. The air was strangely silent. The last of the mortar shells had exploded, and the gunfire had ceased. The skirmish had gone on for hours. A patrol moved forward to check for the enemy, and as they rounded a bend, an enemy soldier lay bleeding in the path. One of the soldiers raised his rifle to shoot the man, but his partner told him to stop. The man was in bad shape, and he needed help. All the killing was senseless, and it seemed criminal to shoot someone who had one foot in the grave. The soldiers carried the hurt enemy towards his own side, and they bandaged his wound. They left him with water and food and went their way. In the center of a terrible war... The two men felt like they had found something right to do, and they had done it. If someone would do us harm, that is something that they will have to answer for. God has said we should love everyone, and we are called to serve not only our friends, but our enemies as well. We will answer to God for our actions, as will our enemies. It is vital that we have nothing to be ashamed of in that final time. We must not act like those who would hurt us. When we treat them with love, we make their sin doubly dark. And the Lord rejoices in our loving kindness. I have difficulty loving those who love me, Father. So I definitely need your help to love my enemies. Show me what is good in them that I might respond with concern and affection. October 31st. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Chapter 25, verse 28. The evening had begun with the usual Halloween pranks. Smoke bombs and toilet paper for trees, soap for windows, and an occasional water balloon for unsuspecting passerbys. Then the older boy from down the street had joined in. He had grown tired of the pranks and suggested they try some more exciting tricks. Under his guidance, the band of kids slashed some tires and broke glass in driveways. 
They poured oil on people's front steps and they threw rocks at windows. What had started as an evening of mischief turned to adolescent terrorism. The children went wild with their destruction, causing the residents to dread the idea of Halloween's yet to come. Even the most innocent prank is still going to hurt someone. When we make another person a victim, we take from them their right to security and comfort. When pranks get out of hand because we lack lack self-control, they can be dangerous and cruel. If we don't have any self-control, then we don't have any will to say no when we should. We need to pray to God for a strength and wisdom so that we can resist the temptation to do things that we know we shouldn't. Discipline is an important part of the Christian life, and if that is what we lack, then we must seek it with all our heart. Help me to resist evil, O Lord. I know that I am sometimes weak and I need your strength to get me through. Help me to do to develop self-control and discipline in my life. November 1st. As the bird by wandering, as the swallows by flying, so the curse so the curse causeless shall not come. Chapter 26 verse 2. The memorandum said that the front office was displeased with the performance of some of the employees. One of the girls became really upset when she read the notice, but the girl next to her seemed unconcerned. She walked over to the girl and asked why she was untroubled by the message. The only people that that message is speaking to are the ones who are giving less than their best effort. I come in here every day and give 100%. I know that I am doing the best job I can. As long as I know I'm not goofing off, then I don't care what they have to say about it. If you're doing all you can, then relax. If not, take the memo as constructive criticism and do better. When an insult or comment is directed to us, we need to weigh it carefully. If it is valid, we should act on it. But if it is unfair, then we need to not be troubled by it. God asks that we try to do the best we can be that we try to be the best that we can be. If we are true to our abilities, then he will be pleased with us. To the person who does all that they are able, an insult is like a bird that never lands, that never hits its target. While it is aloof, it can do no harm. When I do all that I can, make me secure in that knowledge. When I am doing less, help me to see ways to improve and grow. Help me to handle insults with grace, and let me not be troubled by comments which are not true. November 2nd. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Chapter 26, verse 4. It had gotten all over school that Andrew's mother had gone to a mental institution. Most of the children were sympathetic, and they didn't tease him. But there were some who went out of their way to torment him. He tried to ignore their insults, but finally it got to be too much for him. Whenever one of the children would say something cruel, Andrew would strike back, saying terrible things in return. His anger overwhelmed him, and he found himself getting into fights to defend his mother. Even the children who were sympathetic didn't want to be around him because of the anger he showed. He looked for weaknesses and skeletons in the closets of his classmates. And whenever he found out something that they would be ashamed of, he spread it around school. Some people can be very cruel, but that is no reason for us to reply in kind. Jesus was tormented and ridiculed by many people in his lifetime, and he let the insults bounce right off. There is no way that Christ would ever have returned an unkindness. We are called to be loving, giving people, even to those who would try to hurt us. God blesses those who will remain loving in the face of cruelty, and his anger will be against those who do wrong. Evil is contagious, O Lord. When one person does something cruel and another person replies cruelly, then a cycle begins which can only be broken by love. Give me the love to heal anger and cruelty, Father. November 3rd, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. 
chapter 26, verse 5. She kept telling her friend not to cheat. The test was a big one, but it really wasn't worth cheating. Her friend had done it before and had always gotten away with it. But the English teacher they now had was a watchdog. Nothing got past her gaze. The teacher was as good at catching cheaters as her friend was at cheating. Nothing the girl could say would sway her friend from cheating on the test. <clears throat> the day of the test came and her friend attempted to cheat. She got caught and received an F for her grade. The good girl got a good grade and she tried to explain to her friend that she didn't have to cheat to do well. Her friend listened carefully and with the help of the first girl, she was able to pass her classes without further deception. When we know someone who is trying to live life by sinful ways, we need to try to tell them. But it is wise to remember that most people only learn by making their own mistakes. When they do, we need to be there to support them and help them understand. We need to speak out against the folly of the foolish and hope that they learn their lesson, whether it is the hard way or not. Only by being caught can some people ever learn that the sin that they commit is stupid. Help me to be a good support to my friends, even though they do not listen to everything I say, Lord. Help me to be there to help them whenever I can. <clears throat> and then our last reading um, for this video, November 4th. The legs of the lame are not equal. So is a parable in the mouth of fools. Chapter 26, verse 7. The discussion always came around to religion. She was a devout woman who read her Bible daily, prayed morning and evening, and went to church weekly. He, on the other hand, was neither a believer nor a non-believer. He just liked to argue. The problem was that he had read the Bible and he knew it inside out. She would try to explain her beliefs to him, and he would tear them apart using scripture as his support. It always made her angry to the point of tears. She knew he was twisting scripture to make it say what he wanted it to say. But she didn't have the knowledge she needed to combat it. He took the Bible and made it into a joke. When foolish people get a hold of the Bible, they can do some pretty terrible things with it. They twist its meaning, and they often use it for selfish reasons. Non-believers love to take the Bible apart and quote it out of context. They like to misinterpret it in order to make believers appear foolish. How much they will look, how, how much more so they will look before the judgment seat of God when they are called upon to explain themselves. God gave us the Bible as a comfort and a support, not as a topic for debate. If we will spend time in Scripture... It will prove a faithful friend, and no one will be able to take its riches from us. I fall into the trap of defending my faith, Father, when I have nothing to defend. Christ defended himself with his resurrection, and he needs no further defense. Help me to remember not to argue my faith, but live it. All right, so that will do it for um, this video. So I'll go ahead and end here, and I'll just see you in the next one, guys. Take care. God bless.